Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about the first milestone in the design phase of the ADDI process. And that milestone is instructional scope and sequence. So the first step that you need to do for this milestone is to define your instructional scope. Now the guiding question that you should follow as you define your instructional scope is what essential relevant content will your instruction cover? And answering that question is the goal of defining your instructional scope. Now the first step of defining your instructional scope should be to clarify the goal of your instruction. So go back to your analysis work and review your instructional goal. Here's an example. The goal of this instruction is to improve elementary students' attitudes towards healthy eating while promoting changes in their knowledge of nutrients. And we can see from this example that it actually breaks down into two parts. So the instruction has two goals. One, to improve elementary students' attitudes towards healthy eating while promoting changes in their knowledge of nutrients. So there's kind of a cognitive goal here and an affective goal. Now, once you've clarified the goal of your instruction, what you need to do is specify the content that must be covered to address your project's educational problem. Now, if you take a look at the nested circles in the graphic shown here, you can do this by specifying all of the possible content that you could cover that's related to your instructional goal and the topic that you're interested in. Now, of all of that possible content, you want to drill down and determine what is the most relevant content. Once you've figured out that relevant content, you can further distinguish between nice to have relevant content versus essential relevant content. And for your instructional scope, you're trying to get down to that core level of only dealing with your essential relevant content. One of the things you'll have to do is be able to justify your decisions related to what is that essential relevant content. In other words, what evidence do you have that that content is essential and is relevant? Now, there's various factors you should keep in mind as you're defining your instructional scope. So, for example, you might want to think about what might be covered later, a subsequent piece of instruction, as well as determining what won't be covered ever of the possible content. Relatedly, you should think about some of the assumptions you're, you have related to your target audience, such as their entry-level skills or prior knowledge, as well as other influences, such as time, costs, and resources. So let's take a look at how we might be able to identify essential relevant content. So here's the same instructional goal that I read to you previously. The goal of this instruction is to improve elementary students' attitudes towards healthy eating while promoting changes in their knowledge of nutrients. Now, when thinking about what content could be covered, I'm going to look for existing resources such as the National Health Education Standards. And I can see here there's actually eight different standards. And if I was to learn more about each of those standards, I would see that for elementary students, specifically grades through three through five, there's actually all of these substandards. And it would quickly become apparent that in one hour of instruction, even though all of this is relevant to students' attitudes and knowledge of healthy eating and nutrients, it's way too much. So ultimately, what I would have to do is make some informed decisions about how to trim this down, figure out what is nice to have and ultimately essential relevant content. And so for this particular project, this student drilled down to focus on just two of the eight standards, standard one and standard five. And this decision was justified in the paper when the author wrote the researcher ensured that the concepts were age appropriate for elementary students by selecting topics that could be assessed within the population. So this is a nice example of looking at all possible relevant content, but ultimately drilling down and justifying the in-scope content that's gonna be included in the instruction. Now, after you've specified your instructional scope, the next step in the process is to break that content into chunks and sequence. 
Now, the guiding question you should be thinking about while working on this is how will you chunk and sequence your content in a way that your target audience will achieve the instructional goal? Now, the first step in this process is to break the content into chunks. And, and what's a chunk? Well, a chunk is simply a set of topics that go together logically. When you're breaking your content into chunks, you need to ensure that the size of each chunk aligns with the characteristics of your target audience. So some things to be thinking about would be how would the size of the chunks change if you were working with novices versus experts, or with learners who have low motivation versus high motivation, or learners who are really busy and don't have a lot of time versus those who have a lot of time to spend with your instruction. All of those characteristics are factors that are going to influence the size of each chunk. So you need to keep that in mind as you break content into chunks. After you've determined your chunks and you've broken it up into those pieces, the next step in the process is to determine the competencies that each chunk of content will cover. Now remember, competencies includes everything from knowledge, skills, attitudes, behavior, so on and so forth. But what are the competencies that each chunk of content will cover? Once you know that, the next task is to sequence those chunks into a logical order. There's more than one way to put together those puzzle pieces, and you should think about what is a natural flow that would make sense to your target audience. And then ultimately, what you need to do is review those chunks in sequence to make sure that they maximize the chance that they lead to the instructional goal. After all, that's what it's all about. Now, after you've defined your instructional scope and determined the content and sequence of your content, the last step is to create a visual representation of your proposed scope and sequence. So let's take a look at a few examples. So here's an example from a 2021 project by Brian Pope. And this project designed and evaluated a web-based training module that was designed to introduce Google Docs to home-based academic mentors. And so he created this very interesting graphic, and let's zoom in on this a little bit, where he distinguished between entry-level skills, the skills that he assumed his target audience was bringing to the table, and then at, in the orange box, he specified the terminal objective. After completion of Module 1 activities, learners will be able to create named folders in Google Drive, create named Google Docs, manage files in Google Drive, and share a Google Drive folder containing a Google Doc. So those are all of the specific chunks of content or competencies that he wanted his learners to know. And then he realized that in order for that to happen, there were all of these smaller pieces of content that would need to be covered. So number one, they had to share a named Google folder containing a named Google Doc. And in order to be able to do that, number two had to occur. Place a named Google Doc into a named Google Drive folder using the folder placement icon. And then three, create a named folder. And four, create a named Google Doc. All of those were chunks of content that would lead to that terminal objective. And then, of course, it went deeper and deeper as he broke down each of the other chunks further and further. So this is an excellent example, and the arrows suggest the order in which this content would be covered. Now, here's a slightly different example from a project related to online food safety. And this is more of a content analysis in the sense that the student broke down the content into four primary categories. There was an introduction in purple, and then a personal hygiene section in yellow, and then a cleaning and sanitizing section in orange, and then finally a preventing hazards in the flow of food section in red. And then of course, those high level topics further broke down into subtopics. So this is kind of a mind map approach, I suppose. Some people prefer to do this initially on paper, and this can be really helpful. So this was a project related to a brand and communications toolkit for faculty uh, at the University of Hawaii Maui College. And so Mark in this project started out by thinking about all the content and creating some initial categories that ultimately came together in this form of visualization where each column represented a chunk of content 
and the, the subtopics that would be covered under each of those chunks. Now, here's a project by Cleve. This project was about cybersecurity for middle school teachers. What we like about this visualization is the clear delineation between the entry level skills. You could see those in the gray boxes at the bottom and then a very linear progression of what topics need to be covered in what order in order to get to that terminal objective up at the top in green. Now here's another example from John Harwell, and this particular graphic reads from bottom to top. One of the things you'll notice, this was a project about credit scores for young adults, is they're color-coded related to Bloom's taxonomy. So all of the green elements are related to understanding, all of the orange items are related to application, and all of the purple ones are the higher cognitive level of analysis. And so he broke things down. What do these young adults need to understand about the credit system and credit itself? And then they need to be able to apply that information to predict credit score results within various financial scenarios. And then ultimately, he wanted to get them to be able to analyze factors that impact one's credit score. And so here, a nice scope and sequence of the essential relevant content. One more for the road. Here is an example from Priscilla Wang and her project related to runway walks and pageant evening gowns. And she did a great job. She had a legend here with some color coding. Down at the bottom, she had her entry level skills defined. And then she broke her content into three lessons. Lesson one, lesson two, lesson three. Lesson one was an introduction that covered three primary topics. And she specified learning activities related to those topics. Lesson two introduced four different topics. And lesson three introduced four new topics and subtopics. But all of these together led to the terminal objective of the learner is able to perform the pageant evening gown runway walk. Okay, everyone, there you have it, an overview of Milestone 4, Instructional Scope and Sequence. Thanks for watching.